In this video, I'm going to show you the syntax and the contents of Kubernetes configuration file, which is the main tool for creating and configuring components in Kubernetes cluster. If you've seen large configuration files, it might seem overwhelming, but in reality, it's pretty simple and intuitive and also very logically structured. So let's go through it step by step. So here I have examples of a deployment and service configuration files side by side. So the first thing is that every configuration file in Kubernetes has three parts. The first part is where the metadata of that component that you're creating uh, resides. Um, and one of the metadata is obviously name of the component itself. The second part in the configuration file is specification. So each component's configuration file will have a specification where you basically put every kind of configuration that you want to apply for that um, component. Um, the first two lines here, as you see, is just declaring what you want to create. Here we are creating deployment and here we're creating a service. And this is basically that you have to look up for each component. There's a different API version. So now inside of the specification part, obviously the attributes will be specific to the kind of a component that you're creating. So deployment will have its own attributes that only apply for deployment and the service will have its own stuff. But I said there are three parts of a configuration file and we just see metadata and the specification. So where's the third part? So the third part will be a status, but it's going to be automatically generated and added by Kubernetes. So the way it works is that Kubernetes will always compare what is the desired state and what is the actual state or the status of that component. And if the status and desired state do not match, then Kubernetes knows there's something to be fixed there. So it's going to try to fix it. And this is the basis of the self-healing feature that Kubernetes provides. For example, here you specify you want two replicas of Nginx deployment. So when you apply this, when you actually create the deployment using this configuration file, that's what apply means, Kubernetes will add here the status of your deployment and it will update that state continuously. So for example, if a status at some point will say just one replica is running, then Kubernetes will compare that status with the specification and will know there is a problem there. Another replica needs to be created SAP. Now, another interesting question here is where does Kubernetes actually get that status data to automatically add here or update continuously? That information comes from the ITCD. Remember the cluster brain, one of the master processes that actually stores the cluster data. So ITCD holds at any time the current status of any Kubernetes component. And that's where the status information comes from. So as you see, the format of the configuration files is YAML. That's why the extension here. And Generally, it's pretty straightforward to understand. It's a very simple format, but YAML is very strict about the indentations. So for example, if you have something wrongly indented here, your file will be invalid. Um, so what I do, especially if I have a configuration file that has 200 lines, it's pretty long. Um, I usually use some YAML online validator to see where I need to fix that. Um, but other than that, it's pretty simple. Um, another thing is where do you actually store those um, configuration files? A usual practice is to store them with your code because since the deployment and service is going to be applied to your application, it's a good practice to store these configuration files in your application code. So usually it will be part of the whole infrastructure as a code concept. Or you can also have its own Git repository just for the configuration files. So in the previous video, I showed you that deployments manage the pods that are below them. So whenever you 
edits something in a deployment, it kind of cascades down, down to all the pods that it manages. And whenever you want to create some pods, you would actually create a deployment and it will take care of the rest. So how does this happen or where is this whole thing defined in the configuration? Um, so here in the specification part of a deployment, you see a template. And if I expand it, you see the template also has its own metadata and specification. So it's basically a configuration file inside of a configuration file. And the reason for it is that this configuration applies to a pod. So pod should have its own configuration inside of the deployments configuration file. And that's how all the deployments will be defined. And this is going to be the blueprint for a pod, like which image it should be based on, which port it should open, um, what is going to be the name of the container, etc. So the way the connection is established is using labels and selectors. So as you see, metadata part contains the labels and the specification part contains selectors. It's pretty simple. In a metadata, you give a um, component like deployment or pod a key value pair. And it could be any key value pair that you think of. In this case, we have app nginx and that label just sticks to that component. So we give pods created using this blueprint label app nginx and we tell the deployment to connect or to match all the labels with app nginx to create that connection. So this way deployment will know which pods belong to it. Now deployment has its own label app nginx and these two labels are used by the service selector. So in the specification of a service, we define a selector, which basically makes a connection between the service and the deployment or its pods. Because service must know which pods are kind of registered with it. So which pods belong to that service. And that connection is made through the selector of the label. And we're going to see that in the demo. So another thing that must be configured in the service and pod is the ports. So if I expand this, I see that service has its ports configuration and the container inside of a pod is obviously running or needs to run at some port, right? So how this is configured is basically service has a port where the service itself is um, accessible at. So if other service sends a request to Nginx service here, it needs to send it on port 80. But the service needs to know to which pod it should forward the request, but also at which port is that pod listening. And that is the target port. So this one should match the container port. And with that, we have our deployment and service basic configurations done. And to note here, most of these attributes that you see here in both parts are required. So this will actually be the minimum configuration for deployment and service. So once we have those files, let's actually apply them or create components uh, using them. So let's head over to the console. And here I'm going to create both deployment and service. So kubectl apply nginx deployment created and nginx service. So now if I get the pods, I see two replicas are running because that's how we defined it here. And we have our service as well, which is nginx service. This is a default service. It's always there. Um, this is the one we created and it's listening on port 80 as we specified. Now, how can we validate that the service um, has the right pods that it forwards the um, request to? We can do it using kubectl describe service and the service name. 
And here you see the endpoints where you have all this status information here, like the things that we define in the configuration, like app selector, uh, etc. We have the target port that we define and we have the endpoints here. And this must be the IP addresses and ports of the pods that the service must forward the request to. So how do we know that these are the IP addresses of the right pods? Because with kubectl get pod, you don't get this information. So the way we do it or way we find that out is using get pod and then you do dash O, which is for output. And then we want more information. So O wide. And here we see more columns here. So we have the name and status ready, etc. But we also have the IP address. So here is the IP address endpoint specified here. And this is the other one. So we know that the service has right endpoints. So now let's see uh, the third part of the configuration file, which is a status that Kubernetes automatically generated. And the way to do it is we can get the deployment nginx deployment in a YAML format. So when I execute this command, I will get the resulting or the updated configuration of my deployment, which actually resides in the etcd, because etcd stores the status of um, the whole cluster, including every component. So um, if I do this, I'll get the YAML output in my console, but I want it in the file. So I'm gonna save it into um, nginx deployment result and I'm going to save it there and I'm going to open it in my editor next to the original one. So as you see, a lot of stuff has been added, but let's just see the status part. So all of this is automatically edited and updated constantly by Kubernetes. So it says how many replicas are running, what the state of those replicas and some other information. So this part can also be helpful when debugging. So that's the status, but also if you noticed other stuff has been added in the metadata and specification part as well. So for example, uh, creation timestamp, when was the component created is automatically edited by Kubernetes because it is a metadata, some unique ID, etc. You don't have to care about it. And in the specification part, it just adds some defaults um, for that component. But again, you don't have to care or understand most of these attributes. But one thing to note here is that if you, for example, want to copy um, a deployment that you already have using um, maybe automated scripts, you will have to remove and get rid of uh, most of this generated stuff. So you have to clean that deployment configuration file first, um, and then you can create another deployment from that blueprint uh, configuration. So that's it with this video. So from now on, we're going to be working with the configuration files. So for example, if I want to delete the deployment and the service, I can do it using that file um, configuration file as well using delete and like this, the deployment will be gone and I can do the same for service. All right. So using kubectl apply and kubectl delete, you can basically work with the configuration files. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful and if it was, don't forget to like it. This is a video series, so I will create a new one every week. So if you want to be notified whenever a new video comes out, then subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions, if something wasn't clear in the video, please post them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them. So thank you and see you in the next video.